Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about orbital interactions. So to be specific, we'll be talking about preceptal cellulitis and orbital cellulitis. So we'll begin with preceptal cellulitis. Preceptal or orbital cellulitis, it refers to infection of the subcutaneous tissues anterior to the orbital septum. So strictly speaking, it's not an orbital disease, but the reason it's included here that's because the spatial veins are valveless and preceptal cellulitis may spread posteriorly to produce orbital cellulitis. Etiology. Causative organisms are usually Staphylococcus aureus or Streptococcus pyogenes and occasionally Haemophilus influenza. So please take note of the etiological agents, Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pyogenes and occasionally Haemophilus influenza. So here are the modes of infection. The organisms may invade the preceptal tissue by any of the following modes. So the first one is exogenous infection. It may result following skin lacerations, insect bites, and eyelid operations. Two, extension from local infections, such as from an acute hydrolia, more acute decrease cystitis. So what do we refer to when we say a hydrolia? So hydrolium is basically in common thing. You call it, we usually call it a sty. So what's a sty? It's basically acute localized swelling of the eyelid that may be external or internal. And usually it is a pyogenic infection. Okay, so that's what a hydrolium is. It's basically just a localized swelling of the eyelid. And if we talk about dacryocystitis, basically this infection of the lacrimal sac that is secondary to obstruction of the nasal lacrimal duct at the junction of the lacrimal sac. Then we go to three, endogenous infection. It may occur by hematogenous spread from remote infection of the middle ear or upper respiratory tract. So to the modes of infection, we said exogenous infection, basically due to trauma so it may be skin maceration insect bites eyelid operation then we said extension from local infections and then three we said endogenous infection that may occur by hematogenous spread so hematogenous spread from where from the middle ear or the upper respiratory tract so clinical features preceptal cellulitis it presents as inflammatory edema of the eyelids and per orbital skin with no involvement of the orbit so preceptal cellulitis is not going to involve the orbit, it's going to involve the eyelids, okay, and the periorbital skin. So characteristic features include painful acute periorbital swelling, erythema and hyperemia of the lids, fever and leukocytosis may be associated, proptosis is absent, so there'll be no proptosis. Please take note of that. Ocular movements are normal. And conjunctiva is usually not congested and visual acuity is normal. So what exactly are you going to do? So you're going to notice there'll be painful acute periorbital swelling, erythema and hyperemia of the lid, fever, fever and leukocytosis may be associated. The rest are mostly normal. So if you can take note of this image, you're able to see the eyelids are swollen. And so the swelling will be also associated with pain. So what's the treatment? Systemic antibiotics form the mainstay of treatment. So in mild to moderate cases, you give coamoxiclav, which is 500 slash 125 milligrams TDS, or you can give fluoxacillin, 500 milligrams QID for about 10 days. However, if it's a severe case, it needs hospitalization for IV self triaxone, which you get 1 to 2 grams per day in divided doses for 4 to 5 days. Then you can treat as mild case. So basically, you stay, if it's mild to moderate, you give your oral antibiotics. However, if it's, a, if it's a severe case for 4 to 5 days, you need to admit and give them IV self triaxone. And once they get better, then you treat them as mild cases. And systemic analgesics and anti-inflammatory drugs help in reducing pain and swelling. So warm compresses two to three times a day have a soothing effect. Surgical exploration and debridement is required in the presence of a fluctuant mass or abscess or when retained foreign body is suspected.
So that's all about preceptual cellulitis. Now let's go to orbital cellulitis and intraorbital abscess. So orbital cellulitis basically refers to an acute infection of the soft tissue of the orbit behind the orbital septum. Orbital cellulitis may or may not progress to a superiosteal abscess or orbital abscess. So etiology, modes of infection include exogenous infection, it may result from penetrating injury, especially when associated with retention of intraorbital foreign body and following operations like evisceration, enucleation, decrisis, tectomy, and orbitotomy. To extension of infection from neighboring structures, these include the paranasal sinuses, the teeth, face, lips, intracranial cavity, and intraorbital structure, and it's the most common mode of orbital infections. So endogenous infection. So it may rarely develop as metastatic infection from breast abscess, poor peril sepsis, thrombophlebitis of the legs, and septicemia. So modes of infection, what did we say? We said exogenous infection. Then we have extension of infection from neighboring structures. Then we also have endogenous infection. So causative organisms. This commonly involved as streptococcus pneumoniae, staphylococcus aureus, streptococcus pyogenes, and hemophilus influenza. Pathology. So but pathological feature of orbital cellulitis are similar to suppurative inflammations of the body in general, except for the following special features. Infection establishes early due to absence of lymphatics in the orbit. Rapid spread with extensive necrosis is common since in most, in most cases infection spreads as thrombophlebitis from the surrounding structures. Damage that is produced is rapid and extensive as orbital infection is associated with raised intraorbital pressure due to the tight compartment. So clinical features, the symptoms are going to include swelling and severe pain, which is increased by movements of the eyeball or pressure. And these are the main symptoms. So which is the main symptom? Swelling and severe pain, which is even increased by movements of the eyeball or pressure. The associated general symptoms include fever, nausea, vomiting, and prostrations. Vision loss and odiplopia may be complained by patients with moderate to advanced disease. So what are the signs of orbital cellulitis? This includes swelling of lids, which is characterized by woody hardness and redness, and it's usually marked. To chemosis of conjunctiva, which may protrude and become desiccated or necrotic. Then axial proptosis of varying degree is present. Then this restriction of ocular movements might be severe and is frequently present. Then RAPD may occur due to complications in the form of optic neuropathy or central retinal artery occlusion. Then fundus examination may show congestion of retinal veins and signs of papillitis or papilloedema. So this is basically a diagram that's showing orbital cellulitis. So if you're going to try to palpate, this is going to be woody heart, it will be associated with pain. Complications of orbital cellulitis. So these are quite common if not treated promptly. One, ocular complications are usually blinding and include exposure keratopathy, optic neuritis, and central retinal artery occlusion. Two, orbital complications are progression of orbital cellulitis into superosteal abscess and or orbital abscess. So superosteal abscess is collection of purulent material between the orbital bony wall and periosteum and it's most frequently located along the medial orbital wall. Clinically superosteal abscess is suspected when clinical features of orbital cellulitis are associated with eccentric proptosis but the diagnosis is confirmed by CT scan. Two, orbital abscess is collection of pus within the orbital soft tissue. Clinically, it is suspected by signs of severe proptosis, marked chemosis, complete ophthalmoplegia, and pus points below the conjunctiva, which is confirmed by CT scan. 
The temporal or parotid abscesses may occur due to spread of infection around the orbit. For intracranial complications include cavernous sinus thrombosis, meningitis, and brain abscess. Five, general septicemia or pyemia may occur eventually in few cases. So what are the investigations that you will do? Sensitive bacterial cultures from nasal and conjunctival swabs and blood samples. To complete hemogram may reveal leukocytosis. Three, X-ray of paranasal sinuses to identify associated sinusitis. Four, orbital ultrasonography to detect intraorbital abscess. Five, CT scan and MRI are useful. So why are they useful? So they're useful in differentiating preceptal and postceptal cellulitis, in detecting subperiosteal abscesses, in detecting orbital abscesses, in detecting intracranial extension, and in deciding when and from where to drain an orbital abscess. Treatment. Orbital cellulitis is an emergency, and so the patient should be hospitalized for aggressive management. Intensive antibiotic therapy should be initiated to overcome the infection. After obtaining nasal, conjunctival, and blood culture samples, intravenous antibiotics should be administered. For staphylococcal infection, high doses of penicillin S, resistant antibiotics such as oxacillin combined with ampicillin should be given. Cefotaxin, ciprofloxacin, or vancomycin may be used for alternative to oxacillin and penicillin combination. Then to cover hemophilus influenza, especially in children, chloramphenic or clavulanic acid should be added. Then to cover anaerobes, oral petronidase or 500 mg every 8 hours should be added. Two analgesics and anti-inflammatory drugs are helpful in controlling pain and fever. Topical antibiotic eye ointment, QID for corneal exposure and chemosis when there is severe proptosis. For nasal decongestion, drops should be started for revaluation at least twice to thrice daily in the hospital. It is required to monitor the response and modify the treatment accordingly. Six surgical intervention, its indications include unresponsiveness to antibiotics, decreasing vision, and presence of an orbital or subperiosteal abscess. And then surgical intervention may be required as follows. So immediate canthotomy or cantholysis may be needed if the orbit is tight and optic neuropathy is present or the intraocular pressure is severely elevated. Then a free incision into the abscess should be made when it points under the skin or conjunctiva. Three subperiosteal abscess is drained by a 2 to 3 cm curved incision in the upper medial aspect. For in most cases, it is necessary to drain both the orbit as well as the infected paranasal sinuses. So that's all about preceptal and orbital cellulitis. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you.